welcome back to my channel. I'm Maria, if you don't know me, and I'm the owner of Buffling Beats AT, a small handmade jewelry shop on Etsy. Here on my YouTube channel I upload beading tutorials, studio vlogs and other content about my small handmade business. And today I would like to show you how to make fully beaded fringe earrings. I chose to show you a more complex version that I currently sell in my shop. The usual fringe earring you see all over YouTube, Etsy and Pinterest are the ones that have a triangular shape at the top where you will add your fringe to. So this would be such an example. The upper part is made with a two drop brick stitch, but basically it's a triangle. And then down below I added the fringe and at the tips I used strawberry quartz beads. So semi-precious stone beads. So this is a more common shape you will see in a fringe earring. And today I will show you how to make the small version of my Luano fringe earrings. They are also available in my shop in different color combinations. So you can see that the upper part has a diamond shape. And then of course I added the fringe. I added some detailing by using brass cubes in combination with Toho cube beads. I have these earrings in two different sizes, so this is the long one in the turquoise and gold color option. So the upper part has the same size as the smaller fringe earring, but the fringe is much longer. And then I also have a similar earring as a statement piece. These are my Alaric earrings. As always, I won't disclose color codes. So what I will do for my short Luano earrings is that I will link the graph where I will note down all the beads that I use because they are quite a lot. I think, yeah, I use four different bead types in these earrings and a whole bunch of different shades for those Miyuki Delica 11 OB. So you will have a graph that you can reference to. You will find the link down below in the description box. First I will show you which supplies we will need and then I will explain to you how to make these earrings. If you've never done a brick stitch before I would advise you to watch this tutorial first because I won't go into the detail of the brick stitch again so that I'm able to beat the upper part more quickly and then I will explain the details to you about adding the fringe and weaving in your thread and so on. By the way, if you don't have all of these beads, which you probably won't have, and you may also don't want to or you can't buy all of these beads, it really is not necessary to use all of these beads. You can make very pretty fringe earrings with only one bead type and a few different shades. I only chose this fringe earring design because it's a little more complex, but everything that I explain in my fringe earring tutorials, you can apply all of this to very simple designs. First, earring hooks. I always use wire guards. You don't have to. You can just make a beaded loop to add your earring hook, but I use wire guards. And I use Toho cube beads. These are the size 1.5 millimeter. Brass cube beads. These are about 2 millimeter. Then I use four different shades of Miyuki Delica 11 O beads for the upper part of the fringe to make the ombre pattern.
The next color in my pattern is gold, also Miyuki Delica 11 o beads. For the lower part of my fringe I will use a bead mix. So this is a lilac and purple bead mix, also Miyuki Delica 11 o beads. And then at the tip of the fringe I will use Miyuki Round Beads 15 o And I will use white Nymo thread in the size 0.15 mm in diameter, which is size 0. So one thing that I might do differently to other beaders is that I usually only use one piece of thread for my whole fringe earring. Doesn't matter how large or how small, I try to use only one piece of thread. So for these earrings that's about 3 arm length of thread, but for my long shoulder dusters it's about 5 arm length of thread. If you have trouble with tangles or with chafing, please consider using wax if you find that it makes it easier. So first I will measure the length of thread that I will need. That's three. Uh, then I just add some on top and then I cut it. Now first I will need to get the tangles out as best as I can. And now you may have the question, why would you choose to do this in one go and not use two pieces of thread, one for the upper part of the earring and then another one for adding your fringe? Well, the easy answer is I just prefer it that way. <laughs> um, the longer answer is that I don't like weaving in thread because I find that it makes the upper part of your earring stiffer. Because if you only use one piece of thread, you only have two ends of your thread that you need to weave in and not four. So that's one of my reasons. And then, of course, the less pieces of thread you use, the less risk you actually have that maybe an end of your thread becomes loose somehow. And then you may have increased risk of unraveling, which probably won't happen if you weave in your thread in super tightly. But then if you do that and you have four ends and only a small upper piece of your earring, then yeah, it's it's a lot of thread to weave in. So I decide to use only one piece of thread, but I basically don't have only one working thread, but two, because the first piece of thread I will use as a working thread for the upper part of the earring, and then the tail thread is then going to become the working thread of my fringe. But I will show you what I mean in a second. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's start the beading. <laughs> I use a size 10 needle. I will measure the thread that I will need for the upper part of my earring. Let's say it's about half to three quarters of an arm length that I will use for the upper part of my earring. So I have my fingers here so that I know how much thread I will use for the upper part. And we will ignore the whole length of the tail thread. So what I will do first is I will bead that middle row of the diamond shape. And then I will further brick stitch all the way to the top to add the wire guard. And then I will be the lower part of the diamond shape. If you would like to learn the basics about the brick stitch, please check out my basic beading techniques video on the brick stitch. If you need help with the bead counts for the upper part or the fringe, please check the link to the graph in my description box. 
because it's actually very hard to count all the beads, especially if you decide to use other colors. I will start with beading that middle row, which consists of Toho glass cube beads and those brass cube beads. So I take up two beads. I push them down to the spot where I placed my thumb, you know, to mark how much thread I calculated or measured for the upper part of my French earring. And then I go from the bottom to the top through that glass cube bead. And I will place both beads beside each other. And then I'll go back down through that brass bead. Then I will add another glass cube bead. And add it next to the brass bead. Then I add another brass bead. And that's the first row. Now I will add the second row on top. For that I will take up a glass cube bead and a brass bead. I take the second thread bridge and I do a tight brick stitch. So I pull tight, I go back through both beads and up again through that glass cube bead. And you pull tight. So you add a glass cube bead. As I said before, please check the link to the graph if you can't figure out which beads to take up. Another glass cube bead. And I will continue like this until I'm at the top of the earring. Always hold on tight to your tail thread so that this end doesn't get loose. God. I go down another bead row. And up again through that middle bead. And up again through the wire guard. Turn it over just to dis distribute the thread better on both sides. Back down another row. Up again. 
and I go through that wire guard for a third time. Turn it over again. And now we've added the wire guard. I will now go back down with my thread all the way to that middle row so that I can add the lower part of the diamond shape. need to go one up so that I can go down the outer beads of that earring so that I'm in the right spot to add that next row. So you turn it over Keep this part of the thread out of the way when you're beading because you will need it for your fringe. And just the way we did before, we will add now the other part of the diamond shape. So you take up two beads again. And with the help of that second thread bridge, you will do a tight brick stitch. And now we continue as before. So now we need to add the lower tip of the diamond shape. So again, I add a row of two beads. And now I need a row of one bead. So I take up one, turn it over, go through this red bridge and up. And you will notice now that you are able to see the thread. So to make sure that this won't bother us is you need to check which side of your earring will be the front and the back. So in my case I have the working thread for my fringe coming out of this bead. So this will mean that I will add the fringe in this direction. So this is the back and this is the front. So this is just the way I do it, you can do it differently. You only need to know which sides of your earring or the front and the back so that you can wiggle this thread to the back of your earring and you won't see it. So we'll, You will just move it a little bit in this case to the front because this is the front and then you won't see it and you're now coming out of the second bead row and all we need to do now is we're going to weave that thread in so in a brick stitch, we usually don't tie knots. It's, it's not necessary because the stitch is so tight that the thread won't unravel if you weave it incorrectly. So what I usually do, I do this little, these little circles. So I go up to the third row, then I go through the left bead then the right bead and then through the left bead again. So that's a circle. And also I want to place 
the end of this working thread on this side because I know that if I add this fringe, the end of this thread will be on this side. So I will want to weave in this end on this side and this end on the left side. Make sure to pull your thread in between those beads. Then I go up another row, back down through that bead next to it, and then I make another circle. And I go up another row, back down, and another circle. And then I just weave the thread through another few rows up to the top all tight and now you've got your diamond shape now we can cut the first piece of thread so that it doesn't bother us and now we're going to add a fringe. It's all nice and even. Now you thread your tail thread, which is now going to be a working thread. So, as I said before, if you want to achieve exactly the same pattern that I use please check the link in the description box because these are too many beads for me to count for you. So the upper part is an ombre pattern and it basically goes like this. It starts with three beads of color one, one bead color two, one bead color one, one bead color two, one bead color one, and then three beads color two. And you do this for four different shades. Then down here with three beads of your color four. So next I will add a golden bead, then a bead of color four, one golden bead, one bead of color four and one golden bead. Then I will add 15 beads of the bead mix of my choice. And next I will add three brass cube beads. And the tips are made of three Miyuki round 15 0 beads. So that's basically the pattern. And now let me show you how I will add the fringe. So first of course you take up all the beads that you want to have on your strand. So this is the ombre part. Then I add the golden beads. Three cube beads. And three Miyuki round beads. Then you push it all down. And remember, this side of my earring is the back. Then you skip all those 15 0 beads and you go back up through all the other beads. You hold those beads and you pull.
Now we've got a loop and we've got some space in here, so now you switch over to those 15 O beads at the tip. You hold those in between your fingers and then you pull your thread. Then you go up through that bead you're coming out of. You lay it down again and you pull again. And now we need to get down to this bead. So this means I will pass through the rescue bead next to the bead I'm coming out of. You pull a little tight and you loosen it up again. Only a little, only a little tuck. That's all it needs. And then you go down another row. And now you have your first bead strand. Again, you take up all the beads that you need for the next strand. You push them all the way down. You skip all those 15 O beads and you go back up through all the other beads. Make sure not to skip any. You hold those upper beads and you pull your thread. And you're going back up through the bead you're coming out of. You loosen it up a little and then you go back down through that brass bead on the right hand side and also through that glass bead in the next row. Pull tight, you tuck a little to loosen it up and you've got your second strand of beads. Again, you take up all your beads. Never forget to test the flexibility of your French. 
to make sure you like it and it's, that it's not too stiff. I will now speed up the process until I'm at the tip. So I now added the last strand at the tip. You go up through that glass cube bead. You go up another row on the left hand side. And then you go back down on the right hand side. And I will now work back up my way along this side. So I'm back. I needed to take a break because my camera was overheating. <laughs> That's nice. So anyway, I now need to add the fringe on this side. So it's basically just the other way around. You take up your beads. You push them up Then you go back up through the bead you're coming out of Lay it down, pull tight And now you go further up through that bead on the left hand side, one row above. And then you go back down through that bead on the right hand side. You tuck your strand And now you keep on adding the fringe.
that's the last one. Now you go back up and all we have left to do is to weave in your tail thread. So because the middle row is pretty tight, I go through the next bead in the next row and now I begin to weave in. So I go back down through the bead on the left hand side make sure that your strand is, isn't getting too stiff and then I'll go back up up again now I'll make two circles one on the right hand side I mean by the way you can weave your thread in in whatever way you like this is just the way I do it and you can do whatever you want <laughs> then I go back down on the left hand side make sure that your thread is hiding in between those beads so that you don't have so many thread bridges that you can see. Okay, I lied. That's not going to be a circle. I'm going back down. And back down again. So that's the middle row. And I think that's actually quite enough weaving. So I'm going to cut the thread. As I showed you in the other fringe earring tutorial, this one, if you haven't seen it. Of course, if you don't cut your thread close enough, please use a thread zap. It really helps with getting rid of tiny little loose ends that you can't cut with your scissors. So. If you don't know what I mean and you do want to know what I mean, please just uh, check out this video up here in the corner and use the timestamps. So it's noted down if you want to learn about the thread zip and how it can help you. Okay, that's the new earring. You can tuck a little on that fringe so that it's nice and loose and then you take one of your earring hooks it's already open close it and you're done so this is the new one and this is the old one. Here they are. I really love this kind of fringe. <laughs> it's all it's it's so smooth. It's so flexible. I really like it. So let me know whether you will try to make these or similar ones or whether you want to make more basic ones maybe with less, less bead types and the triangular shape at the top. I would love to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, 
det är jag så för. And that's the size. As I said before, I have these in different color combinations. If you're interested in buying a pair of these, please check out the link to my Etsy shop down below. You can also find all my other social media links down below to my Instagram, for example. If you found this video helpful, if you enjoy learning how to beat from me, please like this video, maybe even leave a comment and please consider subscribing for more beading content in the future. I upload at least one beading tutorial a month, but I also post studio vlogs if you're interested in those. For now, I'm off. I wish you a nice day and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye!